Hey everyone, on today's episode of QRS TV, we're going to revisit an ECG from last time from a 12 year old female spade golden retriever. And what we had concluded about rhythm diagnosis was that this dog had a sinus arrhythmia with a couple of premature ventricular complexes or PVCs. So the wide and bizarre beats you see um, without accompanying P waves are our PVCs. And our question for today is can we predict which ventricle these PVCs may be coming from? Of course, the answer is yes, and, and I'm going to walk you through that. And in order to do that, we're going to come back to another previous concept, which was that of mean electrical axis. And so let's run through that exercise for our sinus beats. So step one is to know my sinus beats, are they conducting through um, the heart in, in a normal fashion? So first, I'm going to select my most isoelectric lead in the frontal plane. And so looking at all six of my frontal plane leads, I'm selecting lead one as my most isoelectric. And then I need to go perpendicular to that. My perpendicular lead is AVF, looking at my diagram. And the QRS complex in AVF is predominantly positive. So I can conclude that my MEA is in the general vicinity of the positive pole of AVF. Now I know that this um, individual method is not an exact science, so I can maybe quickly corroborate it by another eyeballing method. If I look for the greatest net deflection, so in the frontal plane, which lead has a QRS complex that has the biggest deflection, the biggest net deflection, when you take the positives and you subtract the negatives, my eyeball tells me that that is lead two in this case. So I can also conclude that the positive pole of lead two, since my QRS complex is positive in lead two, um, also represents um, the general vicinity of the MEA. So with those two methods, I now know with pretty good certainty that my MEA is in the area depicted by the triangle here, the shaded in triangle, which of course is in the normal range for a dog. It's pointing towards the left ventricle because it has more mass. So here I know my MEA is proceeding roughly from right to left in this two-dimensional plane. So now let's look at our PVCs. Well, the first one I've circled here, I noticed that its QRS complex is oriented opposite to my sinus beat. So if I concluded that my sinus beats had an MEA going from right to left, I'm going to conclude that my PVC here has an axis going from left to right in the opposite direction. So that tells me that this could be a left-sided PVC versus the next PVC over. It has a QRS complex that, that is oriented in the same direction as the sinus beats. So I'm gonna conclude here that it too, like the sinus beats is going roughly right to left, therefore originating in the right. So here is my example of a left ventricular VPC and a right ventricular VPC for the reasons um, we just went through. So now let's test our knowledge. I have another ECG here from a boxer. Now it's very busy, um, but let me orient you here. So the top three lines are multiple leads, um, all um, nine leads in fact, so six frontal plane leads plus three chest leads, V1, V2, V3. And then along the bottom line, the fourth line down there is um, lead two all the way across. And what I've done is depicted the PVCs as the beats that have the arrows um, pointing to them. And so if you cast your eye from top to bottom, you can see in multiple leads what those PVCs look like. And I've also put a box around um, one example of a PVC in the augmented leads, AVRLF on the left, and then um, a box around what the VPCs look like in leads one, two, three on the far right. And the heartbeats that are immediately to the left of those PVCs in the boxes are the normal sinus beats. And those normal sinus beats have a normal MEA. And what I'm noticing is that in all six of those frontal plane leads, and in the chest leads too, for that matter, my PVCs have an axis that is the same as the sinus beats. So that tells me that those PVCs might be traveling roughly right to left, like a sinus beat would, so originating in the right. So I'm going to conclude that these are right-sided PVCs. 
And in my next example here from a golden retriever, once again, I've got arrows pointing to the PVCs and along the top. And I've got a box around a couple of examples of PVCs that show what they look like in leads one, two, three, and AVR, AVL, and AVF. And we have lead two along the bottom again. And what I notice here is that the PVCs have a QRS orientation that is largely opposite to the normal sinus beats, which are the heartbeats immediately to the, the left um, or right for that matter of the boxes, um, the beats in the boxes. So here I'm gonna conclude that assuming my MEA is normal for the sinus beats, which I can tell you it is, um, these PVCs may have originated in the left, traveled um, roughly left to right, opposite to what the sinus beats did. So that is my take on how we tell left versus right-sided VPCs. Um, that does have some clinical relevance for particular heart diseases, in particular, something called arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy in the boxer dog, where um, the majority of PVCs might come from the right. Uh, so hopefully that helps, and we'll see you next time.